the day off, I'll just talk a little about um, our super project. Again, like I said, bias, bias, bias. So um, we've been going uh, for three years now, which I can't believe. <laughs> it's been flying by. Um, but it's been um, a real blast. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we've been up to to sort of set the scene for the day. Um, so Citizen is the Coastal and Intertidal Zone Archaeological Network. Um, it's a bit of a mouthful, but there you go. And we're, we're focusing on citizen science, like you heard uh, yesterday from Gus. Um, and uh, we work in partnership with all sorts of fabulous people. So um, the Crown Estate and National Trust are huge landowners all along the coast. Um, so it's really, really fruitful partnerships working with them. Um, Historic England provides some amazing advice for us um, as well, uh, all across the country. Um, and we're working with our partners, the Nautical Archaeology Society. We're just back here, so I definitely recommend visiting their stall if you haven't already. Um, and Council for British Archaeology, um, who provide um, amazing support for community archaeology work all around the country. Um, so it's a really strong partnership. And of course, um, we're all based at MOLA, so we're all MOLA employees, so it's that really strong um, archaeological background we all have as well. <coughs> and all thanks to the Heritage Lottery Fund, uh, without whom we could not do all this fabulous stuff. Um, but what's fabulous about it, let me tell you. <laughs> Don't take my word for it. Uh, so here's what we've been up to for the last three years. Um, a fair bit. Uh, these are all places we visited, um, which is pretty staggering. Uh, we've been, we've been pretty busy putting a lot of miles on our uh, minibuses. Um, so in case, uh, you're not sure, we've got three offices here. So you're going to hear from our little teams here. So three offices around the country, so we can um, more easily get out um, and see the coast and see um, our estuaries, especially after something has happened, you know, sort of uh, big storms or th something. When it changes rapidly, you have to be able to move rapidly. Um, and, it's, and it's all the better to sort of interact with our local volunteers um, who are super engaged, so you're going to hear from them in just a second. Um, but we've been uh, doing heaps, actually. <laughs> so uh, over 200 outreach events. So raising awareness about coastal archaeology and intertidal archaeology and why people should care about sticks in the mud, basically. Um, <laughs> so it's quite important. Uh, and, um, and then once people start caring about it, then we've held over 100 training events as well um, over the three years uh, with a lot of returning uh, volunteers as well. So it's really exciting to see. Um, and then just been keeping busy in between, uh, doing a lot of serving and uh, other work as well. So I'll show you some pretty pictures, and I'll stop talking for a second. Um, here's what we've been up to. So uh, we've been down to East Sussex looking at the wreck of the Kunato. Um, so you can point it out here. Is my little laser pointer going? So you can see it come through here and here. So it's a wooden clipper here. And we've been down there. Uh, we were down there surveying with some National Trust volunteers um, and got a great um, a plan of the, the wreck here. And we're going to hoping to revisit again with some uh, National Trust volunteers in the coming years to see if anything has changed, because it's quite a dynamic environment down there uh, with the sort of shingle and um, chalk boulders rolling around on top of this really fragile um, structure. Uh, we've been to sort of less coastal and intertidal things that you think of uh, when you think of the beach. Uh, this is a, an atomic weapons research establishment. <laughs> so we've got nautical, we've got all sorts of other as well around the coast that we're looking at. So we're doing a lot of um, recording of sort of ephemeral structures on the foreshore here. So actually this is, um, I don't know if Izzy's here today, she was definitely here yesterday. Uh, Izzy and um, Colin were working on, Colin, are you in this picture? I can't remember. Uh, anyway, we're, we're working um, down at Orford Ness in Suffolk, which is fantastic. And this is actually a um, sort of a bomb target. So it's pitch and chalk pushed into the shingle. Um, and it was a very temporary structure, but from the air it would look like a black and white square as you would aim um, a bomb at. Uh, and this is actually, it's such a dynamic environment, the shingle moves rapidly around here, um, and things like this are going away, so we're trying to record them before they disappear. Not to mention the lighthouse, <laughs> which is probably not going to be there long, that much longer. But anyway, that's another story. We've been down to the Isle of Wight, uh, recording a uh, Hatherwood battery, um, which uh, you can see here. Some of the upstanding structures are still here, but some of them are slowly making their way um, into the sea. So they can be down here. So we're recording, um, did some recording work in section. We're getting a nice plan of the, um, the battery itself. This is just looking over into the needles 
on a piano with white hair. So it's a really beautiful uh, landscape as well. Um, but um, I think we got a really decent plan out of that. So it was a really, really good work. We've done a couple visits down there. So uh, really super. Um, well, wouldn't go amiss without talking about the Bronze Age shaft, the bell chute. Um, so stop me if you've heard this one before. But uh, these uh, were photos taken in the 1980s, uh, bell chute, back in East Sussex again. And if you see here, we've got a very long sort of vertical shaft coming through. You can see these little <coughs> dots here. And do you see these little dots here? Those are people for scale. Um, and they're quite far from the cliff edge here too, safety first. Uh, but if you zoom in on these little dots here, they're actually foot and hand holds carved into the sides of the chalk cliff. It's spectacular, right? Uh, and it just revealed suddenly as the cliff shears away. So again, using this sort of coastal change that's in natural processes, um, but it can reveal archaeology as well as take it away. So it's quite special. And it shows the need for a sort of rapid response for recording these things. Um, so within a few years, as the chalk slowly comes away again, 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 um, it disappears. Fast forward 30 years later, we thought, you know what, there must be the bottom of this thing hanging around somewhere. Uh, let's see if we can't get our super volunteers down there uh, to have a look for it. So all goes down there, tells them sort of what to look for, hole this big, uh, off you go, right? <laughs> sort of in this area. Um, and four months of searching, and not just in the summertime months, this is November to February, by the way. So pretty chilly, they're down there pretty much every day. And what do you know? They find the bottom of it. <laughs> um, and again, this is, these, you see the size of these chalk boulders that roll around over and over on this uh, landscape. So you could have walked by it every day and not seen it, because the boulders could be right on top of it. Um, and it's only through being quite vigilant, knowing what to look for, and um, knowing who to call when you see it, uh, that we could then record it. So we called in a big team, um, you know, crack team, excavate the, the bottom of it, see what fabulous riches are at the bottom of this shaft. Um, and it was about yay deep, unfortunately. <laughs> we can't win them all, but we did find it, and that's pretty spectacular. But also a thing to note here, so notice our fabulous smiley volunteers pointing at their lovely find. Look how far the cliff is now too. So we can use this archaeology as a proxy for how the coast has changed. And we have an absolute date for when we saw that last, where that cliff was. And we have an absolute date for where the cliff is now. So again, it's using archaeology as a sort of beyond archaeology and looking at environmental studies as well. So pretty exciting stuff. Excuse me, do you know what that was for? Um, well, <laughs> They called it a ritual shaft, which if we know in the biz, uh, <laughs> means they don't really know. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm not sure. Um, you could probably send the literature on it. Maybe all knows better than me. There's also an upcoming program that might tell you more about it. Oh, that's true. Uh, potentially, on Channel 4, uh, in the next uh, few months or so, we've, uh, we were doing some filming with Britain at Low Tide. So it, it should feature on that as well. So I don't know if that's too mysterious. Uh, but yeah, watch this space, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of the R word. Yeah, ritual. Uh, we've not just been um, doing training. Like I said, we do a lot of outreach with um, folks to just get out there and experience the landscape, experience um, archaeology on the foreshore. Um, and we, don't, we just do that through guided walks as well, but guided dog walks as well, because it's usually when you're uh, reading about something fabulous found on the beach, um, it's by someone walking their dog because they walk in the same place every day and they notice when things are different. So um, our Southwest team who have uh, a bit, they're dog lovers, I would say, safely. Um, and yeah, they took these fabulous uh, guided dog walks down um, at Sutherland Beach in Dorset. Um, and everyone seemed pretty happy with that. Um, we've been doing building recording as well. So not just, um, uh, offset planning and so forth, but uh, getting some elevations of uh, St. Patrick's Chapel up in Heacham. I won't talk too much about it, just in case uh, I don't want to ruin Andy's talk, so just, just zip ahead. Um, but you might see some familiar faces there. <laughs> uh, again, uh, guided walks, but we've um, we had some student placements, some master students uh, uh, placed with us as well. Um, so this is actually um, uh, one of our master students, uh, Henry, um, giving a guided walk um, to our, uh, some of our colleagues at the CBA. 
Uh, and this is um, in Bridlington, New Yorkshire. There's some really fabulous coastal defenses, as you can see here, the sort of tank traps all along here. So they're all still lining there. Um, they're fabulous uh, condition, and we've been kind of keeping an eye on those, especially as the sands shift, they start moving around. Um, but it's really um, great to see some of our volunteers then going on to engage some other volunteers. Another fabulous one, I just thought I'd throw this in because a bit gratuitous fabulousness. Um, these are pre prehistoric footprints um, at Formby in Merseyside um, on the Sefton coast. Um, don't take my word for it again. So you can see some modern ones, uh, but definitely some not modern ones. Here, we've got some traps coming along this way and along here. Those are human footprints. We've also got animal footprint tracks coming through. Um, so when you see stuff like that, it's so spectacular. Um, and it's so ephemeral as well. So again, showing the need for, these are, these are gone within a few tidal cycles um, sometimes. So showing people how to capture information quickly um, so that we don't have to be there to do it. Um, it's, it's essential and it's really, really exciting. Um, again, we're, I'm not going to talk too much about this because you'll hear more about it from uh, more exciting stuff <coughs> later. But we have been using drones um, to capture. I think Gus mentioned this one yesterday. Uh, this one's in uh, Cliff at Kent, um, and again, it's very sticking mud here, and um, the tide didn't go far enough to get a uh, we couldn't have got a survey from the back of the vessel here um, without having um, some floaties and maybe a snorkel. So we don't want to be doing that, so we let the drone do the work for us, and here it is. Um, you can see the targets we set out for the drone so that we can then uh, measure off of this plan, uh, this 3D model, so it's very exciting. Um, and again, you can see where the tide mark is here, so you don't want to be um, surveying that vessel uh, with tapes and anything like that. Um, and another sort of different type of stuff we've been doing, and this is very recently. Um, in fact, Marcus, you can see we spot yourself in that picture. Um, but recently we're out with um, Historic England, uh, capturing some scientific dating, so looking for um, uh, dendrochronology um, samples we could take or uh, radiocarbon uh, dates on a feature up in Cleethorpes. Um, possible trackway up there. So we had two uh, areas we were working on here and um, gathered some samples with uh, Historic England uh, scientific advisors and a crack team of everybody. So it was very exciting. Um, and the scientific dating team. Um, so that was good fun. A bit cold. Uh, we had to run off site because the fog rolled in and the Coast Guard literally shouted us over bullhorns to get off the beach. <laughs> so safety first, everyone. Um, and we're also here to tell the tale. Um, I'll quickly mention our smartphone app. You'll notice on your chairs you have little pouches for your smartphones to go in so that they can stay waterproof uh, because unfortunately we, uh, the beaches aren't always this blue lovely sky <laughs> we have to deal with. Um, so you can keep your devices dry while you're out there recording um, on the smartphone app. It's free to download. Um, if you haven't done so already, there's a QR code on the back um, of a little flyer in your pouch. So there you go. Another quick one just to wrap it up. So what have we been up to for the last three years? Uh, well. A fair old bunch. Um, everyone loves a pie chart, so I'd throw this in, make it nice and colorful for you guys this morning. Um, and it's just to show that it's most, you know, it's, we do a lot of intensive engagement with our training, um, and it's super fun, um, and as are our outreach. So actually, you guys are going to be another stat in this one, because I think we fall in sort of here and here. Um, so we'll be adding to our blue section of our outreach pie chart. But um, yeah, we've been uh, very busy and having a great time. Um, so just to wrap up, uh, we've got a fair few of people in our archaeological network. So the important part about this is it's Coastal Intertidal Zone Archaeology Network. So that's, that's you guys. Um, and uh, we've, we've sort of interacted or talked to uh, 8,000 8, people uh, through outreach events in the last three years. So been pretty uh, busy bees. Um, 1,200 people have come to training sessions, uh, which is pretty exciting. Um, and uh, nearly 2,000 people have signed up for the app, <laughs> which is staggering. Um, not all of them are active users, but I think a lot of people use it for, as a gazetteer to kind of walk around and see what's out there. So that's pretty exciting, too. Um, and a nice distribution of where you guys all are. Um, don't worry, it's anon uh, anonymized, so we won't be sending you a uh, weird post. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, and who are these 2,000 people? What are they providing um, for the record? Because it is preservation by record. Uh, these features won't be there uh, in situ, so we're recording them as best we can. Um, and that data then is going back into um, HERs, the historic environment record. It's going to go to 
um, Stark England and National Trust and all their partners. It's uh, going to be freely available, and that data will inform the future. So the stuff that you guys are doing is making a real difference, and it's really exciting. Um, and I will let the numbers speak for themselves, but they're pretty high. So keep up the good work, you guys. Um, and last but not least, sorry, Oliver, I'm picture you up here. Um, uh, but it's, don't just take my word for it. It's, these are uh, responses from some of our volunteers. Um, and I don't want to steal Esther Sunder, so I'll just quickly whiz over them. But um, it, I think this one probably will show up in your slide as well, because it's just such a fabulous uh, thing. And I think it's really important to do something that's important. Um, so thank you guys very much. And I will stop talking now, and I will pass the microphone over to Ian. Thank you.